an engineer, a computer programmer, and a filmmaker, the three pillars of the universe. They have formed a consultant firm, and each episode they are contracted to solve the world's greatest problems. This is Important Business. Season's greetings, and welcome to Fancy Wolf's fourth episode of our podcast, Important Business, where each week we get together and try to solve the world's problems. I'm your host, Cameron Kennedy, and I'm joined today by my co-host, Taylor Robinson. Ho, ho, ho. Howdy. <laughs> um, we're also joined by our other co-host, Ryan Koliakovo. Welcome to hell. <laughs> oh, <wow. Okay. laughs> um, and yeah, once again, we're joined by our guest, Hannah Stewart. Guten Tag. Guten Tag. Wow, you're done. You were saying that on the way here. I was. Yeah. But yeah, this is our podcast where each week we get together to solve the world's problems, as you would have heard in the intro. Uh, we post every Thursday at 10 a.m. Atlantic time. That's 9 Eastern. 8 Central, right? Yeah, I always mess that one up. Uh, 6 Pacific, just Google it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And you can find us on Spotify, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find us in video form on YouTube, and the easiest way to get to that is fancywolf.com. But for now, let's get down to business. And what we're going to do is similar as two episodes ago where we went through through our favorite games of the decade, one per year. We're going to go through our favorite movies of the decade, which... I feel like I'm curious if we're going to have a bunch of crossovers, Hannah and I, because from about 2014 onward, yeah, most of these we probably saw together. Yeah, I have to preface this by saying like I, there was a clear before I started going to movies with you and then after. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, even the point that you say that, though, like there's before then like some real, I shouldn't say garbage because there isn't garbage on the yeah. list, but like. It was very difficult. Yeah. For See, 2012 specifically, I had a lot of I, I took this topic as you were supposed to think of the favorite movies you saw in that year. Yeah. And so in like 2011, I yeah. had like the Smurfs movie. Oh. Yeah. Because that was my favorite movie I saw that year. <laughs> when she saw it. <laughs> when I saw it. Wow. You remember what years you watched movies. Yeah, I looked See, it up. See, I don't. That's why I had to go with like just ones that came yeah, out. Yeah. I just yeah. went with ones that came out. Yeah. yeah. So then I realized that it was when they came out and I switched my list. But okay. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah, that was yeah. before I met him. <laughs> so yeah, 2010, we'll start with then. Um, do you want to start, Taylor? Sure. You can I, just go around the table. I put Shutter Island. Um, I haven't seen it. I've started it. It's, I always forget how creepy it is. Yeah. So I'll, I'll tell someone to go watch it and I'll be watching it with them. And I'm like, right, this person doesn't like scary movies. Uh, very creepy movie, but uh, really, really good. I am... Um, I did not see where the story was going as it was uh, unfolding. It's it was very it, much just like... I've heard that's like a twisty kind of movie. Mm. Yeah, well, just not even just that, but like also just you don't really know where it's going to go. Like it's not clear the path it's taking as it unfolds. And I think it's just, it's really interesting. Um, everything that happens during it, you're like, wow, I didn't see this coming. And yeah, it was really good. Cool. I put Toy Story 3. Hey, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. That's a really yeah. good one. I yeah. did not even think of that one. Yeah. That's wild. It's it was so amazing. Far back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's weird that I, I know I'm turning right? away. Every time I look that at you, so I turn away from the microphone. Yep. You pointed that out last time. I'm bad at that. Uh, yeah. For me, again, I wrote down a couple of them because I did that for all of these, just because I want to mention them. Really love the movie Boy. We watched that recently. Yeah. Um, that's Taika Waititi's movie. Boy. Really good. Um, one of my favorites of his. But all of them are kind of as I go through the list. I think all of them are mentioned yeah. um, yeah. besides this one before then. Inception. I think you and I, Taylor both used to consider that one of our favorite movies i was definitely up there i was trying to decide whether or not i liked it more yeah. um but as time goes on i i think i, I if i had to rewatch yeah it, inception is one where Island. i adore it i just the idea is really interesting i feel like it i like it's the one that i always would choose as my favorite is the yeah. one that spoke to me specifically not just one that like i liked and everybody else liked but one that very distinctively was a movie for me yeah um, which yeah. is why i put the social network because i remember that was right. we uh ryan taylor and i saw that in theaters with a couple of our friends in junior high that was a really good movie they all thought it was boring as hell we Loved came it. out of it like holy crap and i yeah. remember thinking when we came out of it like you know it's a good movie when they made the story of facebook interesting yeah yeah well, onto that point, that's why I put Shutter Island because it's all about like crazy people and yeah. like mental illness. So I really related to it because they're absolutely nuts, yeah. like a lot of these people. You like know. you, they're in an insane asylum <laughs> on an island. Yeah, is that so. a twist? No, it's Leonardo DiCaprio going there to yeah. solve like uh, someone went missing at an insane asylum. Okay, because like, I, I only got so far into it, I wasn't sure if yeah, like, yeah. Does it turn out there? He's all like a. Isn't he the crazy person at the end? 
No. I mean, it might be. I don't know. I uh. guess we'll have to go and watch it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, yes, that is exactly what it is. Congratulations. <laughs> okay. He was the missing well, person. Yeah, maybe you should. We'll say spoilers for all these movies. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but it's but, on them. CDs. <laughs> yeah, basically. That's we won't spoil of... anything from twenty from twenty nineteen. Oh, what were you gonna I say? Have a pet peeve. Yeah, oh, you can <laughs> throw. In a, I'm fine with that. You can throw in a pet peeve. Oh, just when people get mad about spoiling movies that have or spoiling television shows specifically that I've been off the air for years. Like oh, I had a friend air, last year. Yeah. I had a friend last year get mad at me because I spoiled the ending of Breaking Bad, and I was like, that mm. finished when I was in high school. Yeah, that was twenty thirteen. Yeah. Yeah, I, no, meant that to, is I meant to mention that one earlier. Also, what is there to spoil? Like the ending. The ending. <laughs> well, like, like he dies. Right. Sorry. As opposed Holy. to what? <laughs> he's a cancer patient who's in a drug lord company where he's obviously trying to get murdered by a ton of people. How did they think it was? Gonna yeah, happen? but his, oh, he got away scot free and lived in Mexico. Remember the they, they, cancer Everyone was loves. Yeah. Everyone loves like a redemption story. He. Like, oh, I, oh, he, okay, right. Yeah. I guess if you're thinking about spoiling it from like someone who just started. <laughs> yeah. They just started it. Like, they were on season one, oh, okay, and they were mad at me la- this year that I spoiled it. Oh, boo-hoo. I like, know. That's what I was saying. <laughs> whatever. Like, I have no like, sympathy You're for still going to enjoy the show just as much. Yeah. Like, yeah. that ending, I don't know. There was nothing, like, surprising about that ending. Like, yeah. the entire time watching, even from the beginning, it's like, the whole premise of the show is, he is going to die, has to do this before he does. Yeah. How do you think the show's going to end? Yeah. And that was just one example, but people like, do do that yeah. all the time, yeah. and I get really frustrated. I'm fine yeah. if it if you're if if a series just came out and you're in the middle of watching it and you're mad yeah. if someone spoils it, right. but a movie or a show that's been done for years. Sorry. Anyways. Yeah. yeah. Meant to say that last episode. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. Um, Ryan. Uh, mine was split between 127 hours and The Social Network. Okay. Yep. I saw part of I think 127 hours. I really, really I feel like it would gross you out. You wouldn't be able to. That's why yeah, I, would, I watched part of out. it. Is I am not good with gore, so a dude Mike still on right? So cool. yeah, uh, dude yeah. cutting his arm off would. Uh, whoa! Hey. Whoa! <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I I actually really like that movie. I was kind of tempted to put it as well because when they when he actually had to like cut it off, like the way they did like the cinematography, oh, yeah. it wasn't like gory, but you. You, you felt the pain. Was it <laughs> on his face? It was on his face and the camera work and the sounds they use. At one point, he either hits oh, a nerve or a tendon. The and there's like a, a, yeah. like a buzz. It, no, it sounds like a buzzing noise. Like a loud this, ringing. If you had to have the audio oh, version of yeah, what it feels yeah. like to hit your funny bone, oh. it was like that. And I was like, wow. God, they it did hurt it so as much well. as his funny bone. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? That tingling, buzzing feeling yeah, you get through a yeah. nerve. When he started hitting it, that happened. And uh, they did they did with the camera and the noise so well. I was like, wow, I can feel that. describing the sound. The yeah. Next yeah. So, I love so it. it was so it good. Me. I was like, God. yep. Gets your I blood can picture pumping. it. Yeah. I know what's happening. This is excruciating. That's a cool thing like, I like about sound design is someone coming up with a sound that doesn't exist. Yeah. But it has to give a feeling and... Anthropomorphize or whatever the word is. Sure, Anthropomorphize. Better. Better word of the than night. I would use. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just where it's like you, you're trying to yeah. elicit emotion um, with a sound effect without yeah. it standing out as... You did it really well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really well. Um, but yeah, so we can move on to 2011 then, yeah. which, Taylor, you want to go again? Um, that was a... W- Moneyball. Okay. Um, I saw Moneyball. I didn't see running Moneyball until like last year. Yep. It's pretty good. Um, it has Chris Pratt, right? Yeah. Yeah, which uh, surprised me. I knew... The, like so Moneyball's all about how they changed the game for how they recruited baseball players so it used to be a lot of like ah uh, well he looks good and he's an all around good player and like he's got confidence when he talks in press conferences so he must be really good at his like yep. the game right to it's numbers you know they hit this many singles they strike out this often they really they can throw it this far and this hard and this fast mm. it's very much became a numbers game and they broke down the cold as a baseball to purchasing almost the stats that you need to have a full team yep. not just have a bunch of all around which really is good players. when did that year take that game take place oh i don't know because it's but, nuts to me because think yeah. about how long video games were like that yeah, yeah like that's why it's crazy is you look at it, video games and it was always about like you would directly have numbers for stats yeah and you would see players that existed for like so i think of nhl position. because that's the so. games my brother always play but like this person's man i'm gonna be getting this shit wrong but like they're <laughs> aim <laughs> gets a certain <laughs> score there's slap right. shot speed and power stuff like that right. they always got different stats yeah and so it was always obvious 
if you set up the CPUs, like the yeah. computers to play, two teams against each other, the one with the higher stats would win. Yeah. So that's why it's nuts to me. That was well, it wasn't well. That that was that was kind of their way of they, what they used to do was who has the best overall. Okay, get them. Who has the best yeah. overall again? Get them. But instead, right. he was picking and choosing. Well, this is an outfielder. Who cares if he's got quick reaction times yeah. like infield? Let's just make sure he can throw it really hard and really fast and can catch like yeah. pop flies. And who cares what he can do for infield because he's never going to do it. You know, like they started picking and choosing very specific people uh, and they just like revolutionized the way they like recruited people for baseball. I didn't know the details to it at all until I saw that movie. So I thought it was actually really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. What did you have, Hannah? Originally, I had the Smurfs. Right. Uh, <laughs> and then I saw your list, and I put Crazy Stupid Love on there. Yeah, that's also mine. That is a good movie. Yeah. yeah I also had oh, Drive and 5050 50 written. I don't have much yeah. to say about those, but yeah. I think the one that I always go back to is Crazy Stupid Love. Of yeah, Jersey. that's a good movie. Movie that I, personally, I liked it more than I should have, I think. Just in the way of right. not a movie I would tip and typically expect to watch, right? Like, right. I'm not super into rom-coms, mm-hmm. right? I don't know if you guys are, but that movie doesn't... No, I'm not either, but I, I, you're right. I really enjoyed that movie, yeah. so that's a good point. Like a really good cast, right? And yeah. people we love. And like, a good twist. Yeah, awesome twist. Yeah. That's when we can spoil because yeah. Taylor and I talk about this scene really fucking often. Yeah. Friggin' Ryan Gosling, uh, when he finds out that the guy that Steve, Steve Carell's wife was cheating with... Is that how it went? I don't remember who did what. I just remember they, It's a family bar- barbecue. Turns out that Ryan Gosling is dating Steve Carell's daughter. Yeah. Th- so they're all there, right? Yeah. Steve Carell is divorced or splitting up from his wife because she was cheating on him with someone. Yeah. We find out that's the guy that's there. Yeah. Ryan Gosling figures out, oh, uh, this is your daughter. You're my friend. Yeah. So this is your wife. And that's the guy that's been cheating. Takes off his ring and punches the uh, yeah. Kevin Bacon. Right. It's, oh, it's yeah. so... Yeah. I love that it, moment. It, it's so good because it's so subtle. He just looks at him, instantly knows. You can see it in his face. He doesn't even do anything. You see it in his face that he's like, I'm going to murder him. Yeah. He just takes his ring off very subtly, walks right over and just nails I like it because it's, it's not so It's not fun. like, oh, because he hits him. It's just this build up throughout the whole movie where you clue yeah. in like, oh, this is what these characters, all their relationships are to each other. Yeah. And he's always been the cool guy. Like you see no flaws in him the whole time, yeah. but you see like, Oh, he legit cares about Steve Carell's character. And that yeah. little moment, he's like, no, I'm doing this for my friend. Well, that's just it. Not only that. And, but, uh, like it wasn't some like Maury reaction kind of like everyone freaks out. It was this very real reaction of, I'm gonna go punch him in the face. Yeah. Like, it was just like, this is happening now. There's nothing else that can happen. And I just thought it was, it was too good. Yeah. It was, it was so fitting to the character. Like you said, what were your personal reasons for liking this movie? Cause for me, that's a lot of it. Yeah. I just like it. I feel like I'm less analytical than you are. I feel like right. you'll pick out the beautiful cinematography. I don't. It's sound, Ryan Gosling. Whatever. It's wrong. Ryan Gosling, so. Ryan Gosling is looks really good. In Steve movie. Carell yeah. is hotter. That's yeah. my, Steve Carell is hotter. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. It's like, I, I remember you, uh, like everyone was aware, Steve Carell looks pretty good in that movie, mm-hmm. and you always had a thing for like older guys. Daddies. Yeah, but specifically people <laughs> around their in their forties and gray foxes. Yeah. And so Steve Carell, like two years ago, he those was photos my that came out butter. of him. Yeah. Like, did wow. you like him in the office? He was he was getting there. He, he was, was he a little didn't have dorky. Gray. As he got older, he as he got older though, and like his hair got short. Like when he came back. Yeah. In the last season, his cameo. Yeah. Um, oh, he was beautiful in that yeah. scene. And when yeah. he has his glasses now and his mm-hmm. like yeah. perfect hair, and yeah. yeah, God, he looks yeah. great now. He looks great. That's our movie. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> crazy, stupid love. Uh, I had the eight movie. <laughs> Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Oh, <laughs> I, I think that said movie. eight. Eight. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Ape. Um, that was the first one of the movie. Yeah. Can you describe I loved it? it? Yeah, it was a bunch of uh, monkeys um, trying to talk. We have a video where you describe the sequel. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah that's <laughs> why. You describe the first one instead. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they're just trying to talk, and then at the end, they, they do talk. <laughs> they <laughs> do like, do talk. So, what do they say? Movies about it's much of monkeys, they try to whole, talk. And learning, they they're just learning to speak English? That's it? Yeah. That's it? I think so. It was a long time ago. I, I could be missing some details. What about the details. end of the world? <laughs> yeah, what happened? But that's the, in the later movies. No, that's in that movie. That's in that the, movie eight, yeah. the flu that gets around everywhere. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Never mind. Because remember, they're <laughs> trying to... One? Yeah, they're yeah. trying to narrow it down in that movie, right? I don't remember. And then you see at the end, you know, it's yeah, that's a thing. where it started. You know, it's a thing because it's a big shocker of like, oh, you see this person, this thing on the plane, and it's traveling across the world. You know, the world's fucked by the mm-hmm. end. 
I don't remember any of that, but that's why I didn't choose it as my favorite movie or try right. to describe it. That's true. Yeah. But yeah, we can move on to 2012, which I have, this is by far my the year. Worst the worst year. It's definitely yeah. the movie. It's I had, the worst year. I had nothing. <laughs> really? No, not actually nothing, but I had a stretch in order to You didn't to like anything. Looper? Because that was mine. I have Looper and Django Unchained written. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, wow. there, I thought there was quite a few. In, but again, like when I'm comparing well. Looper to some of the ones I have later on, or even the social network. Really? I really enjoyed Looper. I really enjoyed I Looper, it but so if, I were, if it came out like some of these other years it might not be top five really okay no i, I, I really like looper, looper it was just um it's very different i wasn't expecting like any other movie that's ever used something like time travel in it not anything like that before Little so i wasn't thing, expecting it i loved its version of the future where it wasn't even blade runner level of technology yeah like they had some stuff it was very gritty and i liked that little things that they put in there um this is one of ryan johnson's movies um guy who did movie brick and he did last jedi and directed episodes of breaking bad um this is his movie where it's the premise is there's these guys that end loops which is like sorry that's what joseph gordon lovett's character is right he ends loops and i'll describe that that's someone who he has a shotgun he goes and he waits a certain place and then suddenly someone will appear there and he shoots them okay what that is is someone from the future being sent back in time and he's there to shoot them and their loop the issue is the guy that shows up one time is it, him. Him. Yeah. Played oh, by I Bruce Willis. That. That's how you're. So that's. The, the, yeah. Why yeah. is it played by someone else? Uh, because it's supposed to be really far in the future. Okay. Yeah. But the issue is they give him makeup to try and make him look like Bruce Willis. And it's very distracting, I found. Yeah. Um, it does kind of make him look like him. It does make him look like him. But the whole movie, I'm thinking just Joseph Gordon Lovett until it gets a little closer on him. It's like, oh, Joseph Gordon Lovett. But he looks like he's stung by a bee. Is, yeah, this, yeah. is this like the beginning of the movie? Or like, is that this the is main? The, that's the trailer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So well, that's the main thing that he's trying. The that's premise the is, yeah, they're on the poster. Okay. You see them on the poster. Is that Bruce Willis escapes like yeah. right, right away. They're, that's, they're, like, they're criminals too. Like that's the time travel was made. Yeah. It was outlawed. And then criminal organizations in the future use it yeah. to assassinate people they want to get rid of. Because what better way to get rid of the body than put it into the past? Yeah. So mm-hmm. they send people in the past they want to get rid of. These are essentially their past assassins. And then when they want to tie up loose ends, they send you back. The thing that and I then liked you're is, gone uh, too, and then there's no evidence of we murdered all these people. That's an example of yeah. one of the things I, I liked about that was very subtle, but is like their version of the future is the drugs he takes in the movie are eye drops. Yeah. Like he takes them that way. It's just little things like that is of like, yeah, that sounds like a realistic version of the future. It helped ground in like reality. Yeah. Um. That yeah. That was one of the little touches that really stood out to me. It's like a cool choice in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have much else to say besides that, but yeah. No. Cool it, movie. Yeah. Yeah. I just like any other movie that involves time travel. Nothing like that. Yeah. <laughs> nothing that I remembered anything being like that. So no, yeah. It was a very it, cool way of using that time travel. Kind of. I wouldn't be too surprised if that's how it went. Yeah. Yeah. If Criminals probably would thing. do something yeah. like that. You know, they probably would send people into the past to get rid of them. You know, why not? Yeah. And it's a cool thing of like, if that, like, that's a cool premise for something. And then obviously the next thing is, what if you're the one that showed up? And that's what mm-hmm. the movie is based around, right? Yeah. Yeah. For you, Hannah? Um, I don't remember watching many movies from th- 2012. So I just put The Hunger Games. Yeah, that's a good movie. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty good. I watched the behind the, the scenes one? on that movie. Yeah, that's the really first good. one. Yeah, yeah. I just remember I that was the first that. movie where I waited in theaters at like midnight for it. You, oh, yeah. Yeah. you hadn't done that for like Harry Potter? Or no, I hadn't done it for Harry Potter. Yeah. That was, I think, the last movie I saw at midnight because that's when they kind of stopped doing the midnight release. It was eight yeah. o'clock after that. Eight o'clock, yeah. Yeah, I really um, like those. Those they movies, were good. So. Yeah. I saw all. I saw the first two in theaters. Third one I didn't. Fourth one I did. Yeah. Um, I remember the third one. It's sorry, what? the fourth one came out around. Harry Potter. No, no, no. Sorry for Hunger Games. I didn't know there was a fourth one. There was split like last two parts. Oh part yeah, that's two. right. Yeah. Remember, we went to the fourth and we came out and that one of Fetty Wap's songs was popular <laughs> at the time. And for some reason, we thought it was so fucking funny if the song cut to that in the credits. Uh, that's what we were talking about. As I we don't remember the that. Th- yeah, we talked uh, about that as uh, we left the theater. <laughs> I thought about that every time. Or maybe you talked about it involved PETA maybe snapping the kid's neck or something. That's <laughs> what so you talked about. You wrote something really dark about it, but I don't remember. Just our theoretical oh. different versions of the uh, ending. Um, yeah. No, the I, I think the second one's my favorite, but I really yeah, like the Yeah, the second one's one. good. I like the second book, too. I, I think forget, it was... Uh, how much has changed in the adaptation of the first one? Yeah, I don't remember it very well. I just remember it, it was, like, I, excited. I remember I liked the hype about it because yep. I had read the books, and then they got our entire school to read the books. Yep, they gave yeah. everyone in 10th grade yeah. um, free copies copy. of the books, and all of us got to go to the theater and watch it. Yeah, I think so. I think I spilled oh, coffee yeah. all over my copy. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I still have my copy. 
I still have mine. It just is covered in coffee stains. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I got the other books, and then I watched the movies, yeah. and then I was like, well... Don't need these? It's I read spoiled them. for me now. So. I definitely read them all before... I think before that movie came out. Yeah, I think yeah. I did, too. Oh, yeah. I had years to do it. I just, you know... Yeah. <laughs> it's not like the movies all came out at once or something, no. you know? The second one... I really love the second one. Yeah, yeah. I really liked yeah. the second um, one. The second one has my favorite use of aspect ratio, which is a weird... So that's, that's why, too. like, this is what I'm saying. Like, he'll pick favorite movies because of this, and then I'm like, I like. <laughs> okay, no, but Patrick like, Harris Harris like, and you know where we go to IMAX <laughs> and they use the taller screen. Yeah. yeah. So they have to film it that way, right? So what they did was in the movie, it's filmed in that really wide aspect ratio with the bars top and bottom, right? Yeah. Whenever they're out of the arena, when they go in the arena, it's the tall one. So Damn. she's going up. She, you see her enter the elevator. She sees Cinna get the shit beaten out of him. Yeah. The elevator rises up, and as it does, the aspect ratio gets taller, and then she's entered, and, like, you don't notice it because they do it while she's going through a dark area, and she gets out there, and you feel like, holy shit, she's surrounded by the elements and everything else out there. You can feel it like- it so much bigger. Yeah. 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 It's very specific, and I really liked it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's Excellent. on the Blu-ray is why I knew that, because I was watching it, and, yeah, you can see it changing, but yeah. For you, Ryan? What about yours? Oh no, uh, uh, loop, loop, uh, loopers. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, I had Django as well. Django, yeah. yeah, Django's really good. Django's good. I don't know how. Like for me, I, like I don't Tarantino know how, movies. I like Tarantino movies. I just feel like I don't have much I I can say about them. Um, I w- I would just say about it. I like movies that if they're going to cover a controversial or sensitive topic, they don't pull punches. They make it accurate. Right. And so I know it was kind of like. It was pretty exaggerated, though. It, right. It's, some but stuff I mean, is. For me, I, I think the one exception that. is don't pull punches, but also make sure you're the right person to tell that story. Yeah, but I, I just meant, like, it, it was criticized because it was extremely violent and, like, a lot of right. harsh language, but you know what was All really violent and had harsh language? That, right? Slavery. <laughs> like, it was awful, and it makes you hate the characters, and it did Slavery really was well. known for its harsh language. Oh, yeah, I guess there was certain words. Yeah, there are, you know. But they're talking about the F word. Is all I <laughs> no, think of, no, yeah. no, no, no. Yep, no, I'm, I'm, I'm remembering now. Yep. Yeah, so yep. that. <laughs> so that's what I mean. Like, yeah, he, he they used it excessively because they used it yep. excessively, and it makes you uncomfortable. I guess because the, it was I really think awful, people's. You know? uh, most people I've heard their criticism would come more from should Tarantino be writing this script? Yeah. I mean, right? Yeah. Um, but again, when the movie's good and yeah. I think it's okay as long as you pull it off. Yeah. That's always what yeah. it comes down to, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it's that kind of thing of, what is it? People have used it to describe porn of like, you can't define it, but if you look, if you're seeing it, you know that's what it is. <laughs> like, you How can't, does that relate to where you can't set a line. For me, it's like, yeah. as far as is this offensive or not? Oh, I see. Because he pulls it off, it isn't. But yeah. and you can't necessarily say, "Hey, you can't." If you're this person, you can't write this or whatever. Right. Yeah. But when you see something offensive, you know what's offensive. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I just thought it was really good because of that. Because it made a lot of the characters that they were like bounty hunting. You hate them. You really, really don't like them, which is good because they are awful people. Yeah. That's why they're hunting them. Um. So I just thought it did that really well. That's yeah. for you, Ryan. About yeah, Django. That's all I liked. Yeah. That's all you liked. <laughs> okay. Yeah um 2013 this was another tough year for me i had yeah me too oh uh, I'll, I'll let taylor go first actually um wolf of wall street that's one of the ones i had written uh me i've yeah. meant to watch that i never watched it's it. good he, it's long it's really good it's though. really long yeah. he's over the top and it's great yeah there's not, I was not a whole lot it. else to say about it like just they took it off netflix when i went to watch it they? it was super annoying keep turning away from yeah, the mic stop it was it was, so it was a really i'm not saying much to you which is why i know it yeah, I just uh-huh. thought it was really neat for like I wouldn't think about a movie. Oh, great, a movie about selling some stocks. Similar to the Woo! Social Network, it sounds like it should be boring, but yeah, but like it was it, really, really good. Like, it's all the controversy is what makes it. Yeah, something right. Yeah. Um, for me, it's that sometimes you see people who go into business school, um, and they're like, I'm gonna be like that cool guy doing all the drugs and wild parties and shit and they don't think no you're supposed to fucking hate this guy or at least like understand he's charming but know that he's a shit he's awful. person an he's, awful person he's stealing and money you're, spo- you're watching a movie that's supposed to be about his ego his i don't even know what you call it like an old like roman figure or something right someone who flew too close to the sun and was an asshole and yeah their yeah. downfall is what yeah. the movie's about right oh, yeah yeah 
I mean, a lot of what he did that made him, like, the real money was completely illegal. So yeah. if anyone goes in to Wall Street thinking they can be like him. No, but I think they think I it's sh- going to be like, oh, partying and shit. Oh, it's, yeah. It's still that shit. Like, the movie's I mean, not sure trying to glorify it. He's trying to but, like, show how friggin' nuts this dude is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he was nuts. <laughs> For you, Hannah? I had Wolf of Wall Street, but I don't, like, it's not my favorite movie. Um, As an alternative, I put The Hobbit, even though in retrospect, it's a horrible movie. Yeah, you were really into it I was into it because I was excited about it. you saw that too, didn't you? The Hobbit. That was like, had you seen the other Lord of the Rings? No. I remember you went to that for some reason. I was excited about it because I'm a big Lord of the Rings fan, but then I saw the movies and I was Mm. excited about more. The idea of more, yeah. But it wasn't good. Which is kind of how I felt with Fantastic Beasts at first. Yeah. So I'm reading the books now. I like it. Yeah. Yep. Our friend David has uh, yeah. created his own unofficial version of an audiobook. Oh, yeah. For Taylor, because he wanted Taylor to listen to them. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think those are up on his YouTube channel if someone wants really? to listen to those. Yeah, Him you could listen Lord to David. Of the Rings? Re- yeah. I, uh, I do have something relevant mm-hmm. that I just got a message about for the podcast. Okay. Um, one of our listeners texted me saying, People in New York before briefcases were made, according to Ryan, and it's SpongeBob running around throwing documents in the air, and there's a bunch of fire everywhere, thing everywhere, and everything. That's kind of down. what Ryan's argument was: is people losing their papers everywhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. the, it's it's kind of like a briefcase disappeared more than never yeah. existed. This is a little callback to a previous episode if you haven't seen it, where episode Ryan tried one. to pitch episode briefcases yeah. to to the Hall of Fame, and it didn't go well. Uh, to that. 2013, I had The World's End, which is, uh, what's that, dude? You have that uh, too? Simon Pegg. Simon Pegg. I like all of Simon Pegg's movies. Um, probably somehow my least favorite of his, even though I yeah. still love that movie. I just like his other ones more. Um, I don't know how much to say about it. It's another Simon Pegg movie. He has a very specific style that's his, and if you saw any of his movies, you know what that is. So mm-hmm. if you haven't seen the movies, go watch one of them, and if you like it, you'll like the others, and... If you don't, then you won't like any of them, I think, right? So Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had Oblivion. I oh. loved that movie. <laughs> Oblivion. I'm you just like kidding. It ironically or actually like it? No, it was a stupid What's fucking Oblivion? movie. I, Oblivion. Oblivion. Oh, Fuck Tom, Tom, Cruise. Tom Cruise. I still remember wow. sitting in the theater, oh, yeah. and it was either you or Thomas I leaned over to. It, it's a movie about Tom Cruise and his wife are the last people on Earth, right? Yeah. And they're like farming shit or something like they're just i'm not sure what they're doing we're gonna spoil it i think they were trying to Fuck like again a, anything 2019 is the only stuff we're not i'm like doing. almost i think it was something along the lines of they were on a like platform that was like way above the earth but like near it to just check to see when it was supposed to be habitable and he would again go they back go back down, down and do some something. stuff he was doing tests yeah. to see if it was yeah. gonna become habitable oh, right, because the thought earth everyone was up in space yeah yeah like waiting for the earth to recover from whatever disaster causes so there's some weird shit going on and eventually he's exploring down below and you see, you see someone in a distance and i remember i leaned over to it was either you were yeah, it was, Thomas. It was me. It was yeah, me. and I said, "It's also Tom Cruise." As a complete joke, because this movie so far was whatever. Yeah. And he goes over, and it's also Tom Cruise. Yeah. And we lost our fucking minds because the was... movie was so good from there on. Of just like everything got so ridiculous, and we're watching the fucking roll around of the sand fighting each other. Yeah. And mm. by the time they get to space, and a bunch of naked Tom Cruises and pods just <laughs> yeah, floating there, growing them. Like, so much weird shit. If you want to laugh and, at a movie that isn't a joke go watch Oblivion. And it's a well-received movie and I'm guessing it's probably a good movie, Insane. but we were not in the mood for it and it made it so... I don't believe it is a good I think movie. it just tarnished final our line. perspective completely. Fuck His you, final Sally. Line, Fuck you, Sally. Like, That's all this cheesy shit in the movie. Shit. It was so dumb. Do you remember Morgan the whole... Do you remember the reason? sunglasses underground the whole movie? Do you remember the reason <laughs> for, like, deciding to choose Tom Cruise and his wife? Was perfect specimens? Yeah. Yep. So they chose them because they're like, oh, they're the Tom two Cruise. perfect human specimens, which yeah. is reality. Yeah. Yeah. But do you remember, do you, Besides do you know why they actually he chose doesn't age, them? right? Do you know why they actually <laughs> chose him, though? Because they were two astronauts that went to space to meet the ship because they were aliens that came down. They just met with them. So they were just the first two humans they met. Mm. How the fuck do they know that they're the perfect humans? I think that was just their, I think that's just what they told them. That was yeah. why they told them. Okay. Well, also there was a bunch of other flaws of how they snuck into the ship where they have super high tech yeah. like There's... scanners to see what's inside their cargo, yet apparently can't tell when a human's in there. Like, yeah, that was true. Uh like, they're like, uh no no bad cargo in there, just life form. Yeah. And they didn't realize <laughs> oh Life, there was two life forms, more like Freeman. Like, <laughs> what did do these advanced aliens not have an x ray machine? Wow, yeah. a bunch of bones. I bet that in the shape of a human. I wonder if there's a person in there. Like, somehow they didn't know that right. Tom Cruise was in that piece of cargo. Dumb as shit. Anyway, my any joke sense. aside, uh, I had gravity in the world's end because gravity was scary as shit. Gravity was. 
I yeah, Age of Gravity. Space. I really liked they do that one shot kind of thing for mm. the first fifteen minutes. I think I timed it whenever I first watched it because I noticed after a while, like, oh, this has been going on a while. Mm. Um, cool movie. What Same shot? guy, uh, Alfonso. Cuaron? What fifteen minute shot? Oh, the movie opens up with they don't cut for fifteen minutes. It's mm. a single shot. Mm. Yeah, um, and it leads into her getting like sh- yeah, everything goes to shit and. Flying it's off so quiet. Space. Is yep. this with Sandra so Bullock? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They did. That's the thing I remember talking to people is uh, that's a movie that is meant for theaters because mm-hmm. not because of just the sound design. It's the lack of sound, which is yeah. what space is supposed to be like, which makes it feel dangerous. Of yeah, like even if you're stranded out in the ocean, which is what I think feeling stranded out in space would be like. Yeah, but at least in on the ocean, you have the sound of waves and stuff. Yeah, if you're in space, literally nothing. Just terrifying. Yep. yep. Oh yeah. Great movie. Um, and yeah, I th- think that I had something else to say, but I don't remember. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Um, which means we're on to 2014, which I like. 2014 is a good year. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's a great say, year. That's <laughs> a year that like I was finally like, oh shit, now let's get going. And this is the year that I probably met you. Uh, it wasn't the year that we met. But because 2013 started going to movies. Yeah. yeah. 2014, which is why one of the ones I have on here is like the Lego movie, which mm-hmm. I have the Lego movie on Me here. Too. Yeah. Not as my favorite. Not as my favorite. Not as my favorite, yeah. but I have it on I here. I love the movie. <laughs> we fucking did I like put uh, <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy because it's Guardians of the Galaxy. Like the soundtrack was just amazing. Yep. That's what I knew nothing remember. about Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy in advance, like at least with a lot of other Marvel mm. stuff. Like I at least knew the characters to some degree. Yep. I knew nothing about Guardians they're, of the Galaxy. They changed quite a bit. And that's one that I wrote down because like I tried not to leave like 2012. I could have written the Avengers because that probably mm-hmm. stuck with me more than something like Looper Django. Yeah. Um, but that's not a me movie. Whereas Guardians of the Galaxy still arguably now twice as many movies later is probably my favorite yeah that was one that very much spoke to me um yeah i wonder i feel like ryan and i are gonna have the same movie for this year oh, fuck yeah i couldn't decide i i made a list of a couple i put the lego movie i put birdman which i love oh, i liked birdman a lot. loved birdman mm-hmm. yep uh whiplash whiplash is uh, my favorite but i think my favorite which i didn't even know came out this year until or this year until i saw yours yeah. was what we do in the shadows yeah which was so probably my favorite taika waititi's movie um i have also written a, a mockumentary about vampires in new zealand yes. what more can you ask for that's yeah that's so that's I the first it. one of his movies i saw taylor's brother recommended it to me yeah yeah and it was i think before he was hired on for thor so because I think the reason I was excited for the next Thor was because, like, oh, I had seen What We Do in the Shadows, yeah. and I was super excited. Daniel was telling me, Taylor's brother told me for a while to watch it, and when I finally did, holy crap, I It's love so it. good. So good. Yeah, yeah. I love that movie. But I, I didn't realize it came out in tw- 2014, honestly. 2014. I thought it was, like, a 2008 movie. Yeah. I, I mean, it's filmed it looks old. Like one. It, it doesn't yeah. look great, but it's it works for what it is. Like, it's that lo-fi kind of look. Yeah. Right? Um, love that movie. Which works for it, because it kind of grounds their, spe- like, not amazing special effects and looking okay. You're watching me try to unlock yeah, my phone. Yeah, unlock your phone. Yeah. Um, yeah, I also had What We Do in the Shadows run because yeah. I really love it. I, I love all of his movies. Yeah, I like the scene where the Peter is Peter the old Peter's vampire. Peter's the old guy that looks, when he like, gets... he, that looks like the vampire in our intro. Yeah. Um, Nos... No, Nosferatu. Nosferatu. Yeah. Yep. yeah. I like took that. a vampire class, so. Oh, you did take a vampire <laughs> class. I forgot. Cameron acknowledged me because I said it louder. I just said Nos. Nice. It could have been oh, a rapper. I said it into the mic, so it'll sound louder. <laughs> so, bump me up there on the. I'll, I'll bump you up there. <laughs> um, you're saying? Oh, just when he was burnt in the basement. Yeah. That's my funny f- favorite is around there where the police officers come in yeah and they're going through and like they're under mind control so they don't notice anything suspicious yeah and there's some crazy shit going on in this house because it's for vampires I... and they go down the stairs and it's finally something they're like oh something's up here <laughs> and they freak out like oh my god are they gonna notice the dead bodies are they gonna <laughs> notice all the satanic shit everywhere and they're like the smoke detector does not look like <laughs> regulation or something like that and they're like oh okay we got them out <laughs> it's like we should really get that checked out <laughs> love that part of the movie i think that's where I, that's literally i think the moment that was like oh i love this movie and i like when taika's character is like flying outside this woman's bedroom the old lady, the, the old lady that he's yep. in love with it's just really funny. It's I like the movements movie. and how everything yep. so obvious. It looks like it's wired. It looks like it's wired. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like they didn't try to hide the special effects, which I like. I have also written down Gone Girl, which I liked a lot. I didn't see it. I like uh, I like the movies done by David Fincher that are not his 
darker ones, his darkest ones. Like he'll do something like um, Fight Club or he'll do something like um, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. I like his ones that are much more feel like our reality. Um, and which uh, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo does, but I really love just Gone Girl of that weird movie of dread that just snowballs as it goes through. And the way that movie ends, just the most uncomfortable feeling. Have you guys seen it? Yeah. Yeah. So you know how it ends. Right. And the last one we were like, fuck, no. And it's, okay, it's getting to that ending. You're like, please yeah. have some resolution. Even though this no. was old, I don't want to spoil it because it's a very good movie. If yeah. you don't know anything, honestly, just watch the movie. Even if you don't it's know that movie. It does a very good job kind of creating a feeling of anxiety. Yeah. yeah. yeah Better than anything I've seen. But again, that's not even my favorite one. My favorite is uh, Whiplash, which yeah. probably... That's not my tempo! Is that your favorite, Ryan? <laughs> yeah. Whiplash, yeah. yeah I've, I forgot about Whiplash. Ryan saw Whiplash that's before me, and Whiplash. he told me to watch it, and I remember sitting down watching it and being like, oh, I that was my I, that's my favorite movie of all time. It's your all-time, yeah. 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 I love Whiplash. Love it. It is... It, yeah. It's so intense. I think it's Ryan so intense. and I both... Like, it's stuck with us because it's that kind of thing of having a passion that is not a not something logical, like not necessarily a money making kind of thing, but something you're good at and something that you love to do. And it's driven to a much different extent with these characters. Mm-hmm. But this uh, weird thing of a passion for an art and the force, the driving force of yourself behind it. Yeah, I liked how they handle that, and I like the lengths that they go to and. Mm-hmm. Him kind of selling his soul to the devil on it. Yeah. 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 Speaking of the devil, the friggin' psychological manipulation he mm. uses on those like kids to yeah. get better is insane. The movie is so good and just yeah. That's one where again I don't want to spoil too much because yeah. it's just so good and just the little things of just like you feel every little moment so well in that yeah. movie. For something that again feels like such a small story, but it, it the stakes feel huge for what is a small story. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Like imagine something like similar story to something like the movie Step Up To, which is a weird thing to describe it to. <laughs> right? I didn't mean I don't know anything about I that. I don't know movie. anything about uh, another person movie. that's yeah, going yeah. to a school that's for great. the arts. Have you seen it? No, but I know it's about goes to a school for the arts and like kind of the drama of that and like what the stakes are, but like they're they, they're melodramatic in a movie like that. And that's not like, that's what that movie's trying to do something completely different. Right. But it's more that something that seems like a premise that would be for, you could think of the premise of this movie also being for a Disney channel movie in a way. Right. Right. Of like, Oh, are they going to get kicked out of band class? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. But really it's like, no, it's like, and it feels like end of the fucking world in a lot of ways. Yeah. Yeah. Right? They're really good at building that tension for sure. Whiplash. Um, but also Grand Budapest Hotel. Oh, I had Grand Budapest Hotel. I still have not watched that. I like I really like it. movies. Talked about that before. Even Fan- Fantastic Mr. Fox is 2009. I would have put it on my list. Okay. Though. This was the first year that right. I... Oh, you really like that guy. I really like Best yeah. movies. Yeah. You're this saying? is the first year that I took like cinematic themes and like the way that they shot things into mm. account. Yeah. I think it was probably because we were hanging out. Yeah. But like <laughs> for Birdman specifically, like how every shot ended either going through like a doorway. Yeah. Like it was all one continuous thing and yeah. the way yeah. that they cut things. They yeah. Right. They, cuts was right. like going yeah. through like a doorway or like coming out. Everything kind of felt like you were just like a bystander. Yeah. The like wall you were following thing. around. Yeah. That's one thing I really liked about that one. Yeah. It, it was like the first time direction was a big reason why i liked a movie yeah it was always content before then Mm -hmm. and who's the director of that one because there's there was a period where it was all i think the birdman mexican directors that were winning a bunch of uh there's a bunch like the guy that did birdman the guy that did gravity and the guy that did there's one other one i can't remember but they're all making so many good movies i think we're all alfonso Alfonso Cuaron is the guy that did Gravity. Who's the... Or maybe I'm thinking of Guillermo del Toro, who did Shape of Water. Probably. But yeah, no, there's a bunch of movies like that that turns out they're having a great year, a great yeah. decade mm. at the Oscars. Because a lot of these, I think I noticed on my list, like a lot of directors that were, um, yeah, Mexican descent, for some reason, were having a great decade. And yeah, Birdman was one of them. Because he had directed something else. I don't remember what it was. But yeah, now they're one of those one takes that are used in a way of it actually means something, actually yeah. gives a feeling in it, mm-hmm. right? And I really like the main character. Uh, I don't remember the actor's name, but he's in like American History X or whatever that movie is. He plays a Nazi. He's and a sorry, good. Sorry, what he's, year is this again? We're doing 20, 2014. That was twenty fourteen. Okay. The not Michael Keaton, yeah. who I love, Michael Keaton. I thought that's what you were saying. I was like, no, Michael the Keaton other main character, American like basically the the guy who plays in the the play. Yeah. 
who plays uh, opposite. I keep wanting to say him. Sam Rockwell. That's not at all his name. He's he a younger guy. Who's the guy that played Hulk, but he was recast? Ed Norton. Ed Norton. Ed Norton. Yeah, I really like him. He's a great actor. Yeah, I like him too. I've heard he's kind of a dick. Probably. Um, <laughs> but he is really good at movies. He's, he's a very good actor. Yeah. Kingsman was also that year. Kingsman, I liked the first. Um, Kingsman. Kingsman, I did not love, but I liked. I like. Um, I think part of the e- the ending kind of soured me on a couple of things. Sure. Yeah. But besides that, like cool movie, stylish cool movie. movie. Same director as some of the X Men movies, right? I think so. No fucking. Who's that? Yeah. I don't. I don't even know where we are in this. I think we're on twenty fifteen. Right. That's oh. why I was getting a little oh, bit confused okay. of like what year are we on twenty fifteen. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay. Oh no 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 no! You're you were doing the right thing. Uh, twenty fifteen. Uh, Mad Max. Yeah. Me too. Um, I Great. never realized how much I liked colors in a movie till I saw that movie. Yeah. Because mm. wow, do they use colors really well? I remember uh, very distinctively is the way they would shoot powder up in the air in certain. Yeah. Yeah. It was just like. Again, very unique movie. Never seen anything like that before. So many weird choices, like even how they would speed up the film at certain points to be really creepy and... To to basically try to give these characters who were trying to give them like supernatural type movements almost. Not that they were actually moving. It looked like stop motion in some ways. Yeah. Creepy. It was kind of... Yeah, exactly. It was like, let's make this look like unnatural. Yeah. Even though we are... You know that it's just them speeding it up and that's all it's supposed to actually represent. It still makes them look unnatural and makes you just like uncomfortable. I think about that opening a fair bit just with him standing there and steps on that two-headed lizard thing and eats it. Yeah. And then, yeah, just those... You yeah. hear the cars coming from... The, or you don't hear the cars coming from the distance and he gets mm-hmm. in as and he drives off and they're suddenly right there. And, yeah. Yeah. So if, if you've ever seen that movie and thought there wasn't much of a story to it, rewatch it and actually pay attention next time. Jeez, and uh is- uh, I'm just calling out our friend Bill who does not like it. <laughs> yeah, Which I because get it. trust Bill's me, there is a ton of story in there. You just have to watch and listen. Pay I attention. Get where Bill is confusing story with plot. Two different right. things. Yeah. There is a very simple plot. There is a lot of story. Oh, yeah. The plot is extremely basic, yeah. and that's the point. The story, there is a lot more to it. I understand where he's saying it's grotesque and grosses them out because it's a gross movie. Yeah. It's a purposely gross. Okay. And if you can't stomach it, I get that same reason as I can't watch gore. But yeah. again, yeah, story is good. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I have to say about that, really. Um, I still haven't seen that movie all the way through. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I also put Room and Inside Out. I the Brie Larson room. movie. Really it's really good. Yeah. I That was the first room. It's the one where she's abducted by a man and he rapes her and keeps her in a thing for like seven years and she oh. ends up having a kid. She, Her and the kid escape and then she gets reintroduced back into society and she is like going through a bunch of like PTSD. Wow, I have uh, not heard of that. But it's like the first time her son uh, experiences real life. Like wow. outside of this little hut they were in for seven years. So, yeah, to him, really room was good. The world. Room was yeah. the world. And then he discovered the world. It's okay. really good. And it's, yeah. I think she I won really an, she won an Oscar for best actress. Wow. It's a really good movie. Okay. I, but yeah, it's really good. Uh, and then inside out because it's really cute. Yeah. Inside out, inside out is one of the two I wrote on here. It's I really, really good. Love inside yeah. out. I, I remember really liking that movie. Yeah. I watched it on Netflix. Um, cause it, I hadn't seen Pixar movies for a long time in theaters. Um, and yeah, watching me like, holy crap, this is good. Yeah. Really loved Inside Out. My movie I've ever done was The Big Short. Mm. Similar situation to The Social Network oh, of... Something boring. They took the, like, the housing market yeah. crisis. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. Burping. Um, <laughs> and made it interesting. And that's mm-hmm. the guy, uh, Adam McKay. Levine. Adam McKay. Um, <laughs> who directed like Anchorman and Step Brothers yeah. and the other guys and... You can see in the other guys how he had this interest in something bigger. Yeah. Like he had an interest in politics and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Adult stuff, not uh, adult comedies, adult stuff as in real grown up shit to deal with. Yeah. And he's very good at taking these big subjects and bringing it down to an audience without speaking down to them. Yeah. Um, and making it. I was going to say, it wasn't a very simple concept. No. Yeah, they made it pretty. And I like that clear-cut. he has a cool sense of humor in that movie. Like, where he'll stop the film and have the character talk to the camera to straight up describe something. It's like, I would like, which I wish more movies did because they'll use to- like terms and topics that like I'm not familiar with and yeah. I shouldn't have to do my research ahead of time. And yeah. I like his way of like, he can't stop the movie to like go back and have it come in naturally for some reason. Someone explain yeah. it's like, no, we're going to do an exposition dump just to catch you up to speed and do it in an entertaining way. Like because even if you already know this, we're going to have like Selena Gomez or Anthony Bourdain or 
what's her name? Uh, Margot Robbie. Just stop and explain it to you. Yeah. Yeah. Ryan? Cool. I had Mad Max usually, but okay. uh, I also loved The Hateful Eight, which I just watched this year. Okay. Which is another Tarantino movie. Yeah, another one I should watch. Yeah, it's I'm super very slow. And it takes place movies. over like a couple days and it's only in like one set. But it's cool because you like you don't know anything and you just get checked in and then you slowly learn like the story and like the connections between the people and all the twists and turns. Red Dead made me want to uh, watch that. It's cool. You should watch it. I think I would enjoy it because I like the opening of Red Dead where they're wandering through the woods. It's all snowy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. That's why I think I'd like it. Um, 2016, which is another year that I liked quite a bit. Civil War for all the reasons that you'd like a movie by Marvel. There's not a whole lot I okay. can say about that, you know? Rooster Brothers, um, yeah, it was who I like them because of Community. Yeah. Directed some of Community's best episodes. There's um, not a whole lot of unique and insights into that one, but, you know. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. reasons why you enjoy Marvel movies is the reasons I like that movie, mm. so, you know. Yeah. I feel like <laughs> <about> it, it. <laughs> they make what a lot of people consider their best ones. Yeah. yeah. Um, I really like La La Land. Yep. Uh, that might be my favorite. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's, I think my it's my favorite, favorite. From that year. I yeah. really liked Moonlight. I think um, I saw all the movies. No, I only saw two of the movies on my list with you. Yeah, but I think I remember when we saw Moonlight. It felt like there should have been another act. Yeah, for or me, it should have been a little bit longer. Moonlight was just. It wasn't even necessarily that it needed more. It just felt like the ending was abrupt. Yeah, that was my bigger issue of it. Was just like oh movie's done that's it yeah i remember yeah. we were like oh it's finished yeah which it's not like when i th- when we thought about it after it's like i don't know what more we needed to see but it didn't feel like it was edited that i think i think it was a pacing issue yeah right of like it felt like a song cutting off right it didn't feel like it plays out it just felt like abrupt ended yeah and yeah that that is part of why for me at all so like i liked it that it felt like a series of short films in a kind of way yeah, yeah that feeling um but yeah, it, it was an abrupt ending in a strange way to me that I did not expect it to. Yeah. Um, I also La La had Lala La La Land, yeah. I saw La La, oh, I didn't even see Lala La Land with you. I only saw Moonland. Moon, Moonlight. Moonland. <laughs> Moonlight with you that year. <laughs> or sorry, out of these ones, yeah. Which is weird because I think we saw 17 movies that year. I think it was 18. 18? I think it was 18. We saw a lot of we, movies We watched that year. 18 movies. One. Was it that year? Yeah. 2016 and the only one on this list is moonlight it's moonlight <laughs> yeah um because the other ones we watched some bad movies yeah i saw i, I guess i saw a lot of land with uh, our friend jesse catherine and i catherine, saw it with yeah. taylor yeah um yeah so la la land though. yeah i really like la la land. yeah i like it too another one same director as uh what's it called whiplash my favorite whiplash, movie yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, I, I the other ones I had written down were Sing Street, which it just felt like mentioning it. I it's just about this guy who lies to this girl that he's li- that he likes that he's in a band, and then he's like, "Oh shit, I have to make a band now." Uh, um, and that's kind of it. It's just a fun movie. Uh, I also had my freaking screen turned off. Um, Hunt for the Wilder People, another Taika Waititi movie. All of us from this decade I like. Um, and Pop Star. Oh yeah. Which. Yeah. Taylor, Ryan, Sean, and I saw that in theaters. Mm. We saw it, I think, opening night. Movie did not do very well in theaters. One of my favorite mockumentaries. Yeah. Yeah. I just, yeah, yeah really like that movie. Fun and comedy. Mm-hmm. I liked it more than, um, I liked Hot Rod. I liked it way more than Hot Rod. But yeah. Every time I hear the song by Le- Macklemore, what is it? Uh, oh. I, when I was in third grade, I thought that I was gay. Yeah. Whatever so that's my whatever. Yeah. I just think of that movie. No, I haven't even seen it. I just think of you making fun of it or yeah. uh, explaining it. Right. Uh, the, yeah. Kind of the thing of did that song, whatever it's called in the movie. I can't remember. I don't remember. Um, but he's very defensive about how he's not gay. Yeah. He's singing like a gay rights song. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I want to get like the LGBTQ uh, community. LGBTQ like I want to get the props for helping for them out. Them. Yeah. But which reminds me of Taylor Swift's new song a little bit. Yeah. Which a lot of people liked it, but it was a little bit of, God, this feels so weird coming from a straight person to say. Yeah. yeah. Um, just of, you can stand up for it, but it is a little bit, it feels so weird. Like, I don't know. I don't know what I can say about it, but it was, the, I don't, there's not much. Yeah, I can who say are that, you to criticize, man? There's not much I can say dude. that the movie doesn't make a good point of. Yeah. Right? In a very simple and dumb way. Yeah. Um, what about you, man? What, you, what about you, man? Uh, I didn't see any of the good movies that year. I meant to, but I never did. You didn't see any of these? No, La La Land, no Moonlight. I meant to. You didn't see Mad Max? You saw Popstar. I saw Popstar. Yeah. 
It wasn't on my list. I didn't know. I forgot about it. Did you it. like Madden? Uh, but I had Wait, Deadpool because I like Deadpool. Oh, Deadpool was good. Was Deadpool good. was oh. better than we thought it would have been. Yeah. We had to see it one and a half times. Oh, yeah. horrific, dude. Theaters. <laughs> Halfway through the movie, uh, someone that I know actually had a seizure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So or they everyone... thought he did. He wasn't completely sure. He may have it was like a trigger thing based on one of the scenes in the movie, actually. Yeah, and it wasn't even the light flickering. Apparently, it was how gross it was. Yeah. Weird. Um, weird thing happened with him. Like, we thought it was maybe a seizure from what some, like, maybe one of the theater employees told us. Uh, but yeah, so we had to go back, like, the they next... They gave us free vouchers. They gave us free yeah. vouchers, and we went back the next week, or a few days later, or something. Yeah. yeah. And we liked the movie. It was a cool movie. And then Hidden Figures, too, I had. I haven't that seen nice. that. That's the one about... Uh, the woman behind the space launch. Oh, my mom and my dad saw what that. What have you? Yeah. But it was also yeah, like that. beginning of using computers in the space launch. Oh, you were so for that. Because I'm a computer programmer. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to get us into space? Yeah. Cool. Eventually. Nice. Thank yep. you. A little bit I appreciate that. <laughs> um, so we can move on to 2017. Yeah, 2017. Thor Ragnarok. Um, Taika Waititi movie. Uh, I knew nothing about it. Yep. Started watching it, and immediately it just started making me laugh a ton right off the bat. And I was like, wasn't expecting this at all because mm-hmm. I just knew really nothing about the Thor movies. Because I watched part of the first one, was like, this isn't for me, and just stopped mm-hmm. it. And yeah, um, but it was really good. I liked it a lot. They they reinvented was, the character. Yeah, it was like way better than I was they afraid. sold me on that one by having the immigrant song by led God. zeppelin as their trailer uh, that is, that <laughs> every time we'd go to a movie and that would play i would lose my mind <laughs> yeah god every single trailer you would either see, like <laughs> maybe 2017 was when we saw those movies maybe there was a lot of it times was, it that, would always play i mean we see a lot of movies in theaters every year besides this last year but um before then like god it, they played the trailer so many times and you would sing so many times and that was the same year as every friggin' trailer. You would ask, is this Aquaman? I don't even know. No, Aqu- I would say, is this Star Wars? <laughs> would I say Aquaman or Star you would say Wars? Aqu- I would say both. <laughs> you would say both. But <laughs> Aquaman was the one that stood out to me because it was so specific. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's probably the favorite thing I saw that that year. Not, not that. Uh, I mean, the trailer while you were singing it. Oh, me, no. me that's singing what the trailer. Not that's the what you're putting down <laughs> for 2017. Because it was entertaining every time. And I saw it many times that year. <laughs> Uh, I feel like every time you just look at me getting ready for me to... Yeah, I was ready. Yeah, I was waiting for it. (laughs) Um, I didn't put that on my list. Um, I did put Get Out, um, and I wanted to give a special nod to Wonder Woman because I did actually enjoy it. We saw saw Wonder Woman, and... There was like two weeks back to back. We saw like Wonder Woman and Pirates of the Caribbean. And Wonder yeah. Woman was a lot better than yeah. Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But Get Out, I really liked. We watched it for free at the library. And that was, oh, yeah, that was that the day that we you were, I was coming from school and you were waiting there for me. Yeah. And there was like a woman. This, where the Yeah. Okay. You can tell it. <laughs> I don't know if I should tell it. No, go right ahead. I think you guys have probably heard about the story. Yeah, there was a woman cool. who was trying to like get his number. And like she, she's a woman who sells herself for money which is i was at the library Ah. by a prostitute and it was very confusing of hannah please get here i have nowhere to go and i was stuck in traffic yeah yeah Yeah, and that was before we watched get out yeah i forgot about that too (laughs) it's really funny wow it was very confusing i I did not expect it to happen it was like i don't know because i didn't want to be rude who expects that to happen at the public library the library (laughs) (laughs) nobody i wrote baby driver as my favorite yeah i liked baby driver i love baby driver just of Oh, close to my mouth. Mm-hmm. Oh, that way. Um, yeah, I liked Baby Driver just as I remember getting a decent amount through that movie and being like, I don't feel the cuts in this movie as much. Like, I don't even feel the scene transitions because it feels like a long music video. Yeah. And again, not much I can say about that one, but as an editor, I love all of Edgar Wright's movies. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thor and Baby Driver. Thor and Baby Driver. Yeah. yeah. I feel like we get to Ryan and. We've already already been Let's been go the other whatever. way. But then night. sometimes I'll chuck in some. Rain. No, that's true. <laughs> Just I feel like we're singing. Go the other way. Do you have one that you yeah. feel strongly about for 2018? Uh, uh, I have one that won't be on your list. It's I Love Dogs by Wes Anderson. <laughs> okay, let, we'll start with Taylor again. Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> and then I'll bring <laughs> no, up no, the. No, no, no. Let's think about Ryan. I was, uh, was going to say we can reverse it back the other way if he has one that he would like to talk about before us. Um, no, you go. Into the Spider Verse. Oh, yeah. yeah um, I think, oh, I had mostly, this, I think that's my favorite. Mostly with that one, what it was for me was they did so much with it being animated that I haven't seen an animated Spider Man movie in, I don't know if I have at all, yeah. or just at least in a long time, um, that you can't do with live action with it 
out just looking completely ridiculous. Yep. Like the scene where he first starts sticking to things, he's turning into Spider-Man, mm. and he walks on the outside of the building, and he's like freaking out, and he's acting all goofy, and a bunch of stuff sticking to him. If you did that in live action, it would just be like the dumbest, quirkiest, <laughs> goofy comedy scene that wouldn't yep. land at all. Like but, when like Andrew Garfield's skateboard was sticking to him? Was yeah. That, was that? Like it's just like, <laughs> it just wouldn't trick. have worked. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> it being animated, it looked so good and it was so yep. funny and it was just like that looks like a funny predicament that a teenager would get stuck in if they all of a sudden have it was powers. using it was, animation yeah in a way like it was using animation to its fullest extent in a way if you can't use it do that in another medium yeah things. it just would have looked mm-hmm. awful if it was live action like that thing i saw good. it was probably a facebook video but they were saying how when they're swinging through the trees him and the older yeah Peter, uh, they like he's made the real spider-man's like real spider-man is animation. animated at 24 frames per second yeah. and uh miles morales is edited uh, sorry is animated at uh 12 frames per second yeah, so he which was like a common Batman. animation technique which is why it's yeah. cool of like taking all these common techniques used in the past because you could get away with 12 frames per second animation yeah. but being like okay we know this is a thing people do how can we take all the different things used in animation and have them have if we mix them together they can have story reasons yeah also uh, the second uh, nicholas cage's character was in black and white and talking about punching nazis oh, I, I was like him. all right which is I'm another sold. cool thing this each one has a different animation style based yeah. on the universe i talking. thought it was so neat yeah. and yeah it was just hannah and i saw that different. choice in theaters we, we, yeah. we were gonna go see something else we were gonna go see what was remember. it toy story 4 no, 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 that wasn't out till uh, like six months later. Okay. Yeah. Well, we were going to see something else. And we we're like, ah, let's just see this again. Yeah. There's nothing <laughs> yeah. else Both want to see it. Or even something like the main bad guy where he is absolutely massive with this tiny little head. Like, mm. good luck doing that live action yeah. whether he's looking like a freak. Yeah. yeah. But with animation and really just like, yeah, he's this overarching massive man who mm. can literally beat Spider-Man to death if he got his hands on him. Like, he's just this gigantic man yeah and it, it works for that but you couldn't do that anywhere else yeah um yeah so that's, that, that's all i have for that yeah um that was my favorite but i also wanted to mention a couple i liked the favorite with olivia coleman as queen anne i don't know mm-hmm. if anyone saw it it's really good uh it was just a really in- I, story-wise it was really good i also liked eighth grade that's mm-hmm. that's the other one that it was either between Spider Verse and Eighth Grade. Yeah, Eighth, eighth grade, grade was really good. Yeah, um, grade. it was so awkward and uncomfortable. Taylor didn't finish it. Nope, I got to a point where the cringe got so high I had to pause it and walk away. Yeah, and I've then I kind of forgot to come back. It was so really? uncomfortable. Yeah. It, it was people uh, talk about that. It's like no cringe for me. Like I push through. I've never had it where I couldn't push through it. You know, I've heard um, being able to feel cringiness and how much you feel it shows how much you are in tune with social norms. So I think I'm if you can't feel it, person. then uh, or if you can. Push no, through, I can feel it. Sorry. If you can, if you're capable of pushing through, maybe you're just not feeling it as much because you don't understand how to be a normal person. Or maybe I am empathetic enough my whole life before the movie that I'm like, oh, no, I understand this. I, they remind me so much of people we went to high school with. Like yeah. you would see people that clearly like you rooted for them. And it's like, oh, this feels very true to them. Right. Yeah. And I also put uh, first man on there. First man I also yeah. wrote of, I like that movie of, I remember we got out of it, it was like not what we expected. I think. No, not at all. I think we expected it to be like a, like a interstellar. interstellar where it's like a bunch of fake science and it's like an adventure movie, yeah, big but it's bomb really about, feeling. yeah, but it's yep. really about him like fighting depression. And I remember yeah. my mom had told me she saw it and I was just like, oh, the ending, it's like sad. And she's like, oh, I thought it was a happy ending. Like he no, got there. So sad. I know. And I was trying to explain like, oh, it's him like finally accepting that he has to deal with the last yeah, however many years you can go you can be the first person to leave the planet and make it to the fucking moon and your issues are still going to be here when you get back yeah so i thought it was really sad but mom couldn't understand that she's like oh hannah everyone gets something else out of movies i'm just like no mom <laughs> this is what it supposed to be i remember i remember we were sitting in the car after and i was thinking like why was it damien chazelle made this movie yeah and it took a long time until i realized like oh the theme of whiplash the theme of la la land the theme of uh first man is like what you have to give up for your passion. Yeah. For Whiplash, it's he fucking sells the soul to the devil for his passion, right? For Lullaland, it's their relationship ends for each of their passions. For First Man, it's kind of the thing of like he's a horrible father and a horrible husband. Yeah. Yeah, horrible with his family to chase this passion of getting to the moon cuz he's trying to fix something broken inside of him because of it. 
and he gets back and it's the one movie where you really see they have to deal with the repercussions and their accomplishments kind of didn't mean as much in the end to them because it fucks up their real life i also had written down uh searching i wouldn't rank it up there with those but i watched it this last year and i was really impressed with it searching of Which like all take pl- takes place on screens oh, yeah, like that. a computer screen that was cool and i was expecting it to be a big gimmicky thing but watching it's like oh wow this is way better than mm-hmm. i thought it could I-, I thought it would have been one of those like they had a horror movie that all took place on social media before and i was expecting that kind of thing and it was not at all i was really impressed and it was genuinely moving in a lot of moments with that like the way they're able to do like build up and um tension by still having it set up like that like cool way of doing something when they knew they didn't have the budget to do everything they wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't need, when I think back on the movie, I forget like all of his scenes he acted and we don't see him in anything besides like a webcam. Like that's mm-hmm. how well it was made for you. Uh, spider verse eighth grade. Yeah. Uh, and then I have, I have dogs by Wes Anderson. Yeah. So you really cool. like Wes Anderson. I do. It's just like the miniatures and the stop motion. is so cool. Yeah. I feel like he's, I, I understand. I can see, it's got his own style. It's yeah, I uh, can see how yeah, that would be something style. that you really connect with from yeah. stuff that you like. It's a bunch of animals, Hannah. You love <laughs> I it. I like animals. Is it any, like is it any sea, like this? sea Any animals? sea creatures? Yes. There is some fish. There's oh, some cool. Fish. Wow. It gets chopped up in the sushi, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's all right. does that one. But yeah, it was good. Yeah. Yeah. And you didn't see much in 2019, which... No. You were right, though. I did see John Wick 3. You did see John Wick 3. I knew you saw John Wick 3. And I did see El Camino, but I wasn't thinking of it because I didn't see it in theaters. Right, because it's on Netflix. That that was briefly, I was considering it as my favorite movie this year, but it's not at all. I saw movies after it that I liked a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that with you? Yeah. Yep. El Camino? Uh, No, I was going to say probably Endgame. It just, you know, there was just so much build up for it. 23 Um, movies, I think. Yeah, like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. It was just the finale to so much. Mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed it a lot. Even if on the movie on its own isn't like the most amazing thing in the world, just because it was like wrapping up so much. I know before, people like a lot really of people thought big. Infinity War was a better movie. I yeah. like Endgame more. I think I like Endgame more. Yeah, um, I definitely do. I just yeah. Yeah, yeah. I I enjoyed it a lot. It yeah. was it was rad. I feel like it allowed for a lot more character development for me than Infinity yeah. War. Did. Yeah. I don't know. There's not a whole lot to say on that because yeah, it, it, it's Endgame. Like it's well, the highest grossing movie of right? all time. <laughs> like, mm. Everyone's seen it. Yeah, like to Marvel. Yeah. You, you know why I like yeah, it. Pretty much yeah. for all Marvel movies, it's the same. That's yeah. 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 Um, my two favorites: uh, Jojo Rabbit. Yep, that's my favorite. Probably your favorite. Yep. And then uh, the Lighthouse. Yep, I also had the Lighthouse, um, and I also had Booksmart written down. I didn't have Booksmart. You should watch that. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, I like Lighthouse because it was filmed in Nova Scotia, and it's a good movie. I remember my mom was asking me if she, if I thought she would like it, and I was like, absolutely not. It's too grotesque for you. <laughs> She's like, what do you mean? Like, there's swearing, and I was like, no, there's like shark vagina, uh, uh, mermaid. Wow. Mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> but it was based off of a shark. Oh, was it? Yeah. You, it was did you recognize on... that when you saw it? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. And that I just recognized like our, it's a callback to our last episode where I was talking about shark penis. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> so you're you you've got expertise on both. Oh, I do. Yeah. yeah. Anyways. So you don't know much about fish, but shark genitalia. And you're, I know you're right lots up that mass, about shark know. genitalia. Yeah. And then Jojo Rabbit was amazing. It was like a harrowing film t- disguised as a Nazi comedy. Yeah. Which yeah, I I I adore that movie. It's amazing. Um, I think that's arguably one that could be my favorite. Yeah. Um, even against Whiplash, like could be my favorite of all time. I have to let it sit with me more but i remember we both loved that like ooh, we expected a good movie we did not expect to love that as much as we did yeah yeah there's not much to say besides like go see that movie <laughs> right yeah yeah all i saw was endgame so <laughs> i saw endgame john wick and john wick in john wick is pretty good yeah. but like endgame is endgame so yeah. i'll say endgame which yeah i feel like this year just the one that stands out is go see jojo rabbit yeah go mm-hmm. see jojo rabbit it's amazing which yeah let's I seen it Install update to keep your device secure. No, thank you. Do it after 2 a.m. Do it right <laughs> now. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, we can end this topic so we can quickly fit in Taylor's story. We're going to do my story next. Okay. Yep. Um, so. What? One hour. Yeah, one hour. Great. Oh, one hour. Right. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying. Okay, cool. So, first, before I can explain my story, I kind of have to explain what I do. Uh, I'm the engineer of the group because I'm Taylor, as you all know. Oh, really? that's why you're the engineer of the group. Yeah, that's why exactly. you're here. <laughs> um, 
So I specifically do modeling and simulation work for the Canadian Navy. Modeling and stimulation? Modeling and simulation. <laughs> okay. Um, like what do you, how does a model stimulate? <laughs> They're mathematical simulations and models that we build on computers oh, to be able to model. test. Is that like algebra? I'm just going to continue now. So I was recently um, mood focused from doing uh, like uh, model-based systems engineering, which I'm not going to bother explaining because that's not the topic, uh, to testing out a new piece of software uh, to basically see if it's capable of doing what the Navy wants it to be able to do. So they're like, this is the software. Here's the guy who's testing it right now. He's going to teach you how to use it. And then you're going to be doing a bunch of testing to make sure that it actually is capable of what we want. And I was like, cool, that sounds good. And he taught me a bunch of how to create vehicles and weapon systems in this piece of software. And he said, okay, a good way to test to make sure you know what you're doing is to build an entire vehicle from scratch without any like base for it, as well as a weapon system, put the weapon system on the vehicle to make sure everything integrates properly and you don't get any errors. So Are like, you allowed oh. to tell us this? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> this is all I'm fine. <laughs> it's all fine. We're fucked. All our secrets are out. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's fine. Um, and so I was like, yeah, sure. So what I went away to do was I decided to build the Harbor Hopper with a <laughs> bunch of guns and missiles on it for so who don't know what the harbor hopper yeah the harbor hopper is an old uh vehicle that was made back in the 50s shaped Um, like a frog it's it's not shaped like a frog the actual vehicle it's repurposed (laughs) that used to be used by the navy to be able to transport goods from land onto boats without having to dock really yeah so they could drive around the land put on a bunch of cargo and then drive it out to the boat because it can go both on the land and on the sea also it's pretty popular in other cities now they repurpose them i saw Uh, one in ireland yeah, they have them. Uh, there's a couple different countries. They're that a popular tourist attraction. Um, so all Halifax, all time. being a on the coast, yeah. decided to repurpose them to be able to do tours around the city and in the harbor at the same time. Well, I mean, not at the exact same yeah, okay, time, okay, but like we get it. We get it. Into the water. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a, it's yeah. like a bus that goes water to in the water. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so like I decided to build it, and so I needed to make weapon systems. So I made a warhead for a missile called Frog, which I said is just a frog and made the parameters of a frog, but it explodes. I then made a missile called the Frog Missile and its description in this software, it lit- I have to write a description of what this war- this missile is. I wrote, it is literally just a missile with a frog strapped to the top of it. Okay. And then, <laughs> and so it's, and it's called the Frog Missile. And then I had to make a weapon system. And I had to name that too. And I called it like the Harbor Hopper Destruction System or something like that. And I need a radar that I built, so I called it the Frogdar. And I threw all of these together, and unfortunately, I didn't build it quite right. I built it like 95% right, so I needed help, which means I needed to call that guy over to ask him for help. And I was like, hey, I need help with making the Harbor Hopper shoot down an airliner. I can't make it uh, do this. Oh, yeah, I made it. I made enemies, which were just commercial airliners. Oh, I my made God. it shoot down commercial airliners. <laughs> Well, I tried to actually. It was the only the problem I had is it was it was shooting the missiles like bullets, like they were instantaneous. But bullets don't or missiles take time to fly. That was the error I was having. So, so yeah. everyone back home should feel very unsafe that this guy is working. For well, like because that that's I was just like, well, I want I'm not going to just put in random parameters for a vehicle. I'm going to go Google the Harbor Hopper. How big is it? How much does it weigh? Oh, wow, what's the length and width? And like I found out all these parameters for it, and then just was like, yeah, now they're not just random numbers. They're actually something. So that's so, fun. Yeah. So that, that's what I did, and uh, I learned a lot. Yeah. And then all my coworkers started laughing and uh, making fun of me, and uh, no, I mean they thought it was funny. <laughs> they were like, "Oh, so Taylor, did you make the Harbor Hopper shoot everything down yet?" And I was like, "No, it's still not working." Oh, <laughs> sounds so. like an engineering joke. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and that's in his way of saying she didn't laugh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it sounds like it'd be funny if I was there. Yeah. It sounds like something you had to be there for. Anyway. You have to know reptiles. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that was it. That's All right. Story. Um, mm-hmm. I'm wondering, should we try and do the family traditions topic, the Christmas one, or should we go right into the Hall of Fame? Mm. I don't know. If, do we have time? Mm. We're at like an hour ten right now. I don't know. You guys tell me how many. Well, do you guys? I don't have weird family traditions. I don't have. Any Mine's gonna last like five minutes, but if it's just all right, me, then do it. I don't really have anything. Okay. Uh, so yeah, my other topic was just gonna be weird family traditions. Okay, which, for Christmas. For Christmas, Christmas traditions. Because yep. um, we're all, right after Christmas when this airs. So um, everyone knows like Elf on the Shelf is a thing, right? Mm. And like it's supposed oh, yeah, to be the, the Elf that watches you or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So my family doesn't have that. It's their own version, which is my dad says on December 1st, a bunch of elves move into the house, into the attic, mm-hmm. and they watch you throughout December to make sure you're good. <laughs> and so 
basically all through December growing up, my dad would make jokes about like spotting them or trying to trap them or successfully trapping them and cooking them and eating them and stuff like that. I mean, like, yeah, I caught one today and I strangled him for a bit, but then he got away and stuff like that. So I grew up with that, which was cool. Um, but uh, another one would be Christmas morning. Our tree would always be downstairs and our bedrooms would be upstairs. And my dad would always walk down first saying he's trying to get his camera ready so he can film our reaction. And he'd always walk down and immediately go, oh, my God, look at how many gifts are down here. Man, I sure wish I got all these gifts. Man, you guys are going to be so excited. But but don't come down yet. My camera's not ready. Oh, shit, I can barely climb over these. There's so many. I can't even, I can't even see the floor. There's gifts everywhere. And, and then you got you nothing. And then, we, <laughs> and then my brother and I would basically be yelling downstairs about how much we hate them. And how we, we just we, we would want to yell down there and be like, we hate you. This is the worst. This is why everything sucks. Oh, my God. We just oh want to go God. down. And, uh, yeah, so it would last for, like, probably, like, several minutes. And he still even does it now, even though, like, or even when we got older, even when he had, like, a phone. Taylor's not like a yeah. video yeah. camera to set up. <laughs> You'd just be like, oh, yeah, get my phone out. Oh, my phone's dead. Let me charge it. You guys just to sit there for a couple hours as it charges or something mm-hmm. stupid like that. My dad would, he would always say he had to check to make sure Santa wasn't still there. So he'd go down first <sighs> and we'd be standing up at the top of the stairs, like, excited. Yeah. Be like, come on, dad, hurry up. And yeah. he'd be like, all right, guys, all clear. Leave. And I remember we got rid of our fireplace and we just replaced it with a regular furnace. And I was so confused. I was like, how does he get through the furnace? Like, where does he come in? And then my mom was like, oh, he comes through the front door. And I was like, but we locked the front door. And she's like, oh, we, he, and this is again, like, my mom tried <laughs> to, ex- magic. my mom tried, no, my mom tried to explain everything with logic. He's like, oh, he has a f- key to our front door. And I was like, that's not safe. Like, I was just like, why can't you just say like magic to a kid? Why'd yeah. you have to explain everything to me? He can yeah. open any lock, man. He can only, exactly. But no, she had to say he had a key to the front door. Mm. I was like, where'd you get the key? Did you oh, watch the Santa Claus That reminded me up? of like, something. Um, a story that I always liked. Another thing, like, similar to the Tooth Fairy of me trying to, like, fucking cheat the system. Christmas one year, asking Santa, this would have been 2005, the year Goblet of Fire came out, the Harry Potter movie. And it didn't come out on DVD until, like, March. And asking Santa, hey, can I have a copy of this movie for Christmas? Because they thought, if Santa makes all of his shit, he's not paying for it, right? Like, who cares if Santa bootlegs? Like, (laughs) it can't be illegal because Santa doesn't pay for anything, right? He makes all of his toys. And so I thought I was going to cheat the system that way, getting a bootleg copy of Goblet of Fire. I always thought I was the first one to think of this shit. No, I didn't. Great. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Any other traditions? Uh, The only, like, uh, none of my traditions are, like... Not out of the norm, yeah. Wacky, yeah. Like Christmas for me, it's pickle, like oldest to youngest used to enter the living room. Yeah, no, we don't even have that. We, well, just, yeah, that was just, we all have like a chair. We like we all have our specific chairs that like the gifts go on, and so it's always okay. the same every year. But it's uh, that's uh, that's. We went families are, uh, Your family went caroling. <laughs> I was going to say. I was trying to think of something. So. Yeah, uh, our families are well rounded and normal. So. <laughs> well, we have, I, I guess there's also the Christmas pickle, which is just an uh, ornament. That's, 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 we that's have that thing. ornament too. Okay, that's, you do. That's a yeah. well known. That's a well known. Every time I brought it up growing up, everyone was like, "You're weird." That doesn't make because they never like we didn't make because we hadn't heard of it. It's the craziest shit if you haven't yeah, heard of it before. Yeah, but yeah. apparently, it's the thing as you get older, you find out. Oh, it's a weird thing that everyone was like, "Oh, this is funny. Let's do it." Yeah. yeah. So should I say what it is? Just explain it. Yeah. People know what the Christmas pickle kind of is, but yeah, go okay. ahead. Yeah, it's basically just like an ornament that's a pickle that gets moved during the night, probably by Santa. I think Santa I think did it Santa. to a random spot on the tree where it's not very, you can't, very visible. Yeah. And then whoever can find the ornament first gets some sort My of prize Sam or whatever. every single year. I won like 80% of the time because while opening presents, we'd always do it after presents. And I would be more. looking oh, for it. Yeah. Well, and then fair. my brother would never remember yeah. to do that first. And every single Big year. Dumbass. See, my, my parents are smart. They hide it while we're doing that. So they'll hide it before we look for it. So we have to leave the room and oh, then come back. And then it's like, oh, good, mm-hmm. look for it now. Well, how does Santa do that? Um, does he come back? Call him and... back. We call him back, yeah. Oh, okay. Santa he has, has a key to the house. So when my dad when my dad goes to like look for him, he yeah. tells him just like, hang around for an hour or two and then come back and hide the pickle. God. Why don't you give me the signal? <laughs> <laughs> dad winks. Well, when, <laughs> when I cough three times really fast, you know that's the signal. I always just think my dad's sick on Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys put out carrots? Sick. That's what we do. Uh, yeah, we put out <laughs> put out <laughs> carrots and we put out like, we'd get granola and we'd sprinkle it in the snow. Mm. Oh, granola, nice. And my mom would like make sure that it looked like there were like hoof prints in the snow. Mm. Oh, that's a good touch. Yeah. But we never would, have like, snow anymore. Take bites of carrot. Wait, on your front yeah, lawn? Yeah, on the back. 
But Santa ra- lands yeah. on your roof. What are the What are the reindeer doing on the back lawn? I don't know. My mom probably tried to explain it some way, like yeah. how they had to go down to rest, or I don't yeah. know. <laughs> she couldn't just say magic. <laughs> All right, that means it's time for our last segment, uh, Fancy Wolf's Hall of Fame, where once again every week we bring something to the table and t- pitch it to everyone else. The per- sorry, the person that brings it pitches it to everyone else to try and get it elected into our Hall of Fame. It could be literally anything. They just have to get a majority vote on it. Uh, so far in there, we have the game Emily is Away, and we have nothing else. <laughs> I was going to say that nothing Because yeah. Ryan pitched briefcases, and that got shut down, and Taylor pitched British people. And, and that clouds. got shut down. And no. clouds in the past. Clouds was yeah, the, del- the deleted episodes. Okay, we had watermelon. Sorry. Mine got in watermelon, and uh, Taylor's one of clouds did not get in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write this oh. down now. I'm going to keep a record. Taylor's over two. Smart smart Mm -hmm, because we were gonna forget at some point we will (laughs) we will (laughs) and i I have to find a way so that later on people can just see what's in there Mm -hmm. maybe i'll uh, i'll figure out something for it yeah um but yeah hannah's gonna pitch this time so what are you bringing to the table that uh today i am bringing to the table nature valley sweet and soft wow (laughs) (laughs) you really so okay you really prepared for this wait nature valley sweet and salty peanut granola bars okay and what so how what made you think of this um between these two shows i asked taylor for a snack and he said he had a nature (coughs) valley bar and i said i would love one and that's that and what happened once you ate it i was happy okay (laughs) <laughs> Do it is. Still looks and so now pitch it. So so why would we oh, want to vote for it? Yeah, like uh, because it's sweet and it's salty. It's peanut butter. It's Nature Valley. Mm. <laughs> um, Ryan's mom's allergic to peanut butter. Deathly but allergic. It's all oh, the nice. Things, <laughs> but it's it's all the things that it says on the thing on the package. As long as it says salty. peanuts, then I guess she doesn't have to eat it. Yeah, more for us. Because she knows there's peanuts in it. I mean, maybe you guys took this the wrong way. I meant that as a positive point. <laughs> that mo- right, yeah, that was the joke I made where I said, ah, oh, nice. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, so that's my pitch. It's delicious. Uh, I used I to eat, originally I used going to pitch the, sharks. I was going to pitch sharks <laughs> because I really like sharks. Cameron thought I was going to pitch my dog, Lily, but I I think what Nature Valley. do sharks? I just think this one's more specific. If you like sharks, I think sharks are, they got two dicks, I'd be like. I will say sure. this is one of the only ones so far. I don't see cons. So right? Far. There's nothing wrong with it. I mean, I it's perfect. It's got see. peanuts in it. I guess one con. But I guess that's my bias. With no cons. Sodium is a little high. Con. Okay, well, n- nutritional ingredients facts behind us. It's delicious. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> now, um, me personally, I don't enjoy it. You don't. There's peanuts okay, in it. Well, Ryan I, does it. Ryan thought he was allergic to peanuts for a long time. I think he doesn't like yeah. them because of that. And now he I don't like them. He I also thought he was allergic to uh, kiwis. Yeah. Are you? Do you just no, not, not like them? No idea. I, rubbed I used to get rashes. His body and he was fine. Mm. Yeah. So I don't think I am anymore. Or ever were possible. But anyway, I don't like the taste of peanuts. Okay. Okay. I mean, but this that. isn't like really. But that's my peanuts. personal bias. This is like personal what bias. about peanut butter? Do you like peanut no, butter? I don't like anything peanut. Mm. You're not going to be able to win him over. You have to get Taylor. Yeah. Not with peanuts. All right. Uh, have you ever had peanut butter? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> From time to time. It's I've delicious, it. right? It is. Think about it with something crunchy. You know how crunchy peanut butter is like the ultimate peanut butter? Mm, I disagree. Do you know how you crunchy peanut butter I'm looking at <laughs> Taylor now. Peanut I'm, butter too. Oh, God. Never mind. I'm still voting it in. Are you that, giving is up that on the us? end of your pitch? I don't know. I thought of this an hour ago. Yeah, you were excited. You changed your mind over sharks. God, the thing that you've dedicated your life to, you're yeah. like, I'm not <laughs> getting mad at sharks. Like pretty. Easily, I'm giving it up for this snack I just ate. Yeah. <laughs> hey, have you one. had one before now? I've. I used to have them all the time as snacks as a kid. It would be like our lunch snack okay. to bring to school. Is it are nutritious? I don't have adult snacks. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> this is kind of a kid snack. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> What's an adult snack? I don't know, like wine and depression? No. <laughs> depression. If you had brought that to the table, I'd been like, all right. <laughs> well, like together as one object. God, one, I am one so activity. disappointed <laughs> yeah. in what you brought. I so thought you were a shoe in for whatever you had. All right, I'm, I'm voting no. I'll, say, I'll still say there's no cons in this thing, but like... I thought you were going to... You literally that. just no. described what it said on there. You just read off. It was Nature Valley sweet and salty but it's granola tasty. peanut butter. They are tasty, but that's, that's not enough for a Hall of Fame. I, I don't even think the Hall of Fame has that high of a bar to hit. Mm. I just think everyone has been doing a real sad job of saying what they actually care about. So I already voted. I don't know what you got. Yeah. I guess it's a no. I'm, I'm a no. 
Well, because I feel bad for you, I'll say yes. Thanks, but Ryan. It's not so going it's in still. Yeah, it doesn't count. Oh, wait. What happened? Right. Oh, yeah. Never mind. I'll say no. It's a <laughs> 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 I mean, it still wasn't going to go mm, in. Yeah. It needs a majority vote to go That's in. That's true. Yeah. I'm still going to say no. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> want, want. <laughs> do you want to do any sound effects before we end? Uh... I can do a good Mario impression. Yeah, I, I knew I was. You know, you know my Mario yeah. impression. Yeah, we need some for the soundboard. Just so we have. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the face. That was not was... the Mario impression. You no, probably thought he was going to say like it's a me Mario, didn't you? <laughs> I thought or a Yahoo. I was supposed yeah. to know Yahoo. No, it's when he falls oh, to his did, death. You, also do Wahoo. you kind of like yeah. mixed that. Around. How does yeah. it? Work? Woohoo! Uh, that's pretty good okay well i just like my wah better yeah Talking what's about your other one that you like uh oh, uh from uh legend of zelda um what's her name navi navi, Na- navi she goes listen <laughs> 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 i like to say that when people aren't paying attention to me so every so often we can just have a little fairy floating around mic, us. Get the mic. Listen. sorry i was adjusting my sleeve no that's that those are my impressions that was good <laughs> all right um I'll, okay so yeah, that concludes our episode wow. of Important Business. <laughs> we covered some very important business today. We did. We did. You can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and I want to say iTunes, but that's not a thing. Uh, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Yeah, that's all three. Yep. There is technically. And more. YouTube. And YouTube, which easiest way to get to that is fancywolf.com. Easiest way to find the podcast, which this is a weird one to say because if someone's listening, they already know this. Mm, um, yeah. Easiest way to find it is looking up in, sorry, is looking up Fancy Wolf, not important business. You look that up, you find a bunch of business podcasts, <laughs> which has been very difficult, but yeah. whatever. Um, you look can up also, Fancy Wolf on Google, too. It gives me a bunch of furry pictures. Yeah, that is also, but an issue is you're best yeah. off like looking these things up with quotations, <laughs> but whatever. We'll figure it out later. Um, yeah, if you have any questions you would like us to answer on the so- show, any world problems you want us to solve, uh, or just more podcast services you want us to be on, you can contact contact us at importantbusinesspodcast at gmail.com. You can also contact me directly on Twitter at Cameron Ken or Ryan Koliakovo at... At Real Joke Master. Real Joke Master, okay. Or Taylor at... Uh, Real Boat Master. Which we've recorded six episodes now. Only four that have properly aired. Yeah. Those two were deleted. Yeah. Every single one you've said you would change that name. Uh, well, you know... When in Rome. Okay. And Hannah, you have anything you want to pitch? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What about seals? Um. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, after all the questions he asked you last episode, clearly cares about the environment. <laughs> <laughs> no, not seals. You want to tell people okay. to recycle? Um, before you recycle, just reduce. There or you reuse. go. Mm. There you go. Or reuse. Yeah, sure. reuse is good. There. Sure. That's it. That's okay. my pitch. Well, I'm glad we got to have you on the show um, before you're off. And so until next time, it's been a pleasure doing business with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. <laughs> I fucking hate that. <laughs> <laughs> Do I get paid for this? Uh, you have to talk to Ryan about that. Right. I don't know. I'm I'm send, you email finances. You. send an invoice to him. Oh, yeah, uh, you can email us at fancywolfpodcast. Right. At I'm expecting compensation. <laughs>